All right, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, we're going straight into our topic for today. We are looking at um, dryness. Maybe that's a very simple way to put it, dryness on the body and then especially internally. And sometimes you have dry nose, dry eyes, your mouth and all of that gets dry, especially around the Hamatan period. And as Christmas draws nigh, it is very likely that we would be experiencing that kind of weather. What are we supposed to do? What should we as individuals do? And especially how can we also help children who may not know uh, how to take care of themselves around this period? And we've been joined by a doctor who can give us general ideas on how to keep ourselves, especially around that period. He is in the person of Dr. Bright Redu. He is a general practitioner and is also uh, with Max International. And uh, he's going to be joining, helping us understand that. Because uh, it's quite a serious issue, especially in the northern part of the country. We are told that uh, humidity, when it drops to as low as 15%, can result in spontaneous nosebleed uh, for some people. Other health effects on humans may include conditions of the skin, eyes and respiratory system, including aggravation of asthma, especially those who are asthmatic, could also have some severe problems. And uh, to start with, we want to find out from you, Doc. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Uh, to start with, how should we deal with dryness generally? Well, um, there are so many ways of doing uh, with dryness. We've got to do with, first of all, humidity control. Um, those who can afford, um, I'm sure most people don't have air conditioners in their homes, but right. air condition is good. And um, this this been this been suggested before in some places that people can um, have a basin full of water in the house, and the water would you know go up and then um, help with the humidity. Right. Because most of the problems come with the humidity. When the humidity drops and it's so dry, a lot of things start to dry up. Mm. So the lips will crack. The, 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 the nostrils, the mucosa, or the soft lining in, mm. the, in the nose will dry up. You have the skin drying, the soles of the feet drying up, and it can even crack and become yeah. really painful. So unit control is good. And so we basically try to trap water around these areas, okay? So when you bath, um, use some soaps um, that contain um, oils, okay? Mm. Some, some suggest that you can put oil in the water you're going to bath. If you're not using a shower, put some oil. And it, the oil will trap a layer of water. And after you bath, don't completely dry your skin. And then have some water on the skin and apply the oil-based um, body lotions, mm. oil-based. And these oil-based lotions will trap water under the skin and then keep the skin moist. You want to apply balms to the lips, especially men. Most women use lipsticks. Mm. And in some cases, it's been suggested that you may want to put a lip balm before you put a colored lipstick. Because some of them don't really protect against desiccation or drying. Um, a few people will want to apply some some lotions in their nostrils if they tend to yeah. get really really dry yeah. to protect this lining inside there, and um, nail polish to protect to cover the nails because mm. the nails too can dry. Lots of water hydration is important because it's dry. We are losing water everywhere, so we need to drink lots of water. At this point in time, we want to take some vitamins to mm. boost the immunity because we tend to get um, easily, we tend to easily get colds and these respiratory viruses. Right. So, and uh, the, with regards to the hair, some some um, people suggest putting water every now and then in the hair or using oil um, creams. You're supposed to avoid um, facial cleanses that contain mm. alcohol. We don't want alcohol. We want water and oil-based stuff. And um, most people lick their lips a lot. Yeah. That's not advisable. I'm actually a victim. Apply balm instead. Because if you lick the lips, the next thing, it dries. It dries faster. It, yeah. And so it, it worsens the situation. So this is pretty much how we handle the dryness of the skin. And also, some people have dryness of the eyes. In, in the Hamilton season, uh, people tend to touch their eyes a lot. And we touch stuff. And there's dust. Pick gems. So you, you may want to wash your hands all the time. Each time you wash your hands, you want to apply um, oil-based hand lotion to, to protect and you may want to wear some shades to protect your, your eyes. Uh, those who have very dry eyes, even in normal weather, mm. would want to use artificial tears or, you know, these um, things I can put on the eye okay. to keep the eye and the conjunctiva moist, moist <clears throat> so that the cornea and the eyes are protected. So oh. this is um, pretty much what we can do. Um, I think you've actually summed it all up in one. But uh, when, the weather, when the system changes, especially during the Hamatan, Sometimes breathing becomes difficult. Around, what, around that time, what would you advise individuals to do? Is it advisable to still go on your regular jogging? Because, you know, you'd be panting and 
because of the dryness, you know, the system also has a lot of dust and all of that. What, what would the uh, best advice be? Well, with regards to that, <coughs> there's a lot of dust in the system, and the, uh, the dust tends to block sunlight, so vis uh, uh, visibility is kind of um, affected. And then sometimes um, late <coughs> in the night or at dawn, you have a lot of precipitation going on because of the changes in the weather pattern, so um, there'll be a lot of fog. So people who want to jog should be careful. This I'm talking about road traffic accidents. Accident. For the respiratory tract um, irritation, the, those who are really prone to getting um, challenges are asthmatics because it's dry, it's going to be irritating, and so asthmatics need to be on the guard. Mm. I mean, if they're supposed to have regular um, um, uh, um, clinic checkups, if you if they are not checking up, they need to prepare. Let you know, let your doctor see them and see they are okay, preparing for the for the bad season. They should have their meds on hand, the inhalers and all these things mm -hmm. on hand. So they should have been stabilized and be doing fine. They have the inhalers on hand. They should avoid, you know, exposure, open exposure to dusty areas. They should keep warm. And um, if they, 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 they don't want to jog, they can do in, indoor gym, mm -hmm. okay. treadmill, that kind of thing, you know, to, to just let the season or pass. Or skipping and push yeah, up something all, all indoor. Those things are, all those things are okay. About two, three months of, you know, it's, you yeah, are skipping and you're not doing the high, high, high mm. uh, impact aerobic exercise. That, that, can, that can do because um, we don't want to have an asthmatic attack. And then uh, sickle cell disease patients too, because of fluctuation in temperature, it may get too warm or too cold. And um, they need to be kept warm. They need to hydrate a lot because mm. they tend to have crisis because extremes of temperature and then dehydration cause crisis, precipitate crisis in sickle cell patients. So those who are sick, you know, they need to um, be the, on the what, watch what, out. What, what, what the best advice when it comes to sores? If someone gets a cut around this period, how quickly should the person treat it and what are the medications? Because uh, certainly I think weather conditions also play a role. Well, the, the same way we treat cuts all, all season, all all season yeah, mm. it should be the same way. So uh, they should see, they go to a hospital, they should let a doctor examine. If they've not had a tetanus, you know, immunizations, give it to them. And regular medications that we give to people who have got cuts. A doctor may have to see, uh, assess the severity of the cuts, mm. how big and how deep the cut is. So that when I leave to uh, my colleagues to, you know, take it out. So I advise that they go. One of the challenges that people have, two things that okay. We have meningitis. That's because, you know, meningitis transmission is from a contact with secretions, okay. sometimes through kissing saliva, the oropharyngeal secretions. And so because of the, the dry weather, the nasal mucosa cracks, mm -hmm. and it's easy to transmit the bacteria. Mm -hmm. So people tend to crowd a lot too because it's cold, especially in the north. So there should be awareness. Mm -hmm. People should be, and look out for fever. Some people like to take anti-malarials, and um, it doesn't respond. Headache, people mm -hmm. have stiff necks. So fever, headache, stiff necks, People have got altered consciousness. They are not feeling too well. Maybe they may have a, um, a, 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 a seizure or something. Mm -hmm. So these things are really warning signs. So if people have these things, which you really report to them, it's very mm -hmm. meningitis. And then bleeding nose too tends to occur. Like you was said before, when the um, humidity drops, the nasal mucosa, the lining, the, they have got some blood vessels there that are really um, thin and weak. And sometimes people pick their nostrils. Yeah. Okay, it's advisable that you rather apply some balm rather than picking the nostrils because they bleed easily. And in case of bleeding, simple home remedy one can apply is that you hold them, hold them and pinch the nose really tightly and elevate the head a bit. But you don't extend way back. Okay. That's dangerous. Okay, so elevate a bit. And someone can time. You, get, you apply continuous pressure, pressure for 10 to 15 minutes. Let's say 15 minutes. You don't do no. and then it's, it. and it's not an entire closure of the nostrils. Oh, you have to pinch, pinch like this, this way at the bridge over here. So that doesn't breathe, breathe through, through the, the mouth. mouth, okay? And don't don't remove to check. Okay. Keep it there for 15 minutes. Okay. The blood should stop if there is no problem. If the person is somebody who has got a problem and they bleed often, that's a different case entirely. They okay. need to be sent to the hospital as soon as possible. But in a normal individual who has never had a nosebleed before, mm. okay, who has a nosebleed in the hamatan period, we can do this. And after 15 minutes, when you remove and they're still bleeding, to the hospital yeah, straight. Because um, bleeding should stop if you apply pressure normally in about 7 to 10 minutes. So after 15 minutes, if they're still bleeding, away to the hospital yeah. straight for doctors <laughs> to assess. There may be a problem there. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, why is the bending to the back not you shouldn't go beyond a certain degree yeah because if you go, if you go way behind like this they will bleed into and the airway into and they will aspirate okay. so the, 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 the blood will choke them okay. so we don't want in case there's still ongoing bleeding 
just a bit like this so the blood can come out okay instead of going all the way to choke them okay but then if you are blocking it and it's still coming out where the ones that are coming out where then do they collect it may be if you block this way uh -huh. and there's there's ongoing bleeding you see it will take a while for the blood to stop right as you apply the pressure it takes a while so if there's ongoing bleeding you want it to come out rather okay. than to go in and choke okay. you okay. yeah that's the 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 reasoning behind it behind that one all right uh, one major concern also will be babies yeah babies and infants around this time what's the best apart from the application of oil-based lotions how else should we protect them close wash on them keep the babies warm keep them comfortable you know babies are really wrapped you have a, a head cap on sometimes they wear gloves or socks shoes uh, they are kept really warm okay. and adequate hydration um, for those that are breastfeeding breastfeed them on time mm -hmm. if there are any challenges uh, mothers should consult their pediatricians you know for um, advice but basically the same measures apply the keep them indoors keep them warm you know around the matan the weather the, the skin reacts quite funny one minute you are warm the next minute you are kind of sweaty what accounts for that and in that situation what do you do yeah that's that's because the body is responding so the body has a thermostat that responds to temperature fluctuations when it fluctuates the body responds to it too so if it gets too cold your body tries to keep you warm then suddenly the temperature rises and then your body tries to keep you cool so okay. that, that that's like an iron <laughs> iron thermostat okay. going on and off okay. yeah all right and um, so in conclusion we want to look at the products you mentioned oil-based lotions and then for especially for the skin and then the scalp but um, for those who have i do not have an eye problem but sometimes when it gets really dry i could feel some itch on, on the eye what kind of is just like any eye yeah. drop or we, have, we have we have saline drops artificial tears these are not i'm talking about the non-antibiotic you know most people when you talk about eye drops people think about antibiotic yeah, eye drops okay. we have normal eye drops that are not anti they are not medications okay artificial tears and then normal saline normal saline eye, eye drops so mm -hmm. you just put these drops on to keep the eyes moist protect the conjunctiva and the covering of the the eye the white yeah. yeah growing up we used to use rub the i don't know you know that, yeah, that, 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 that for the that, inside the nose that's too harsh it's too harsh yeah, i can't stand it the, 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 <laughs> the of, heat of, of, of rub i can't stand it <laughs> the, 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 the men talks or oh, yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's too harsh oh. normal things like shea butter maybe vaseline yeah vaseline those things are perfect okay. so we need to you know people and when, when we are um we should cream the whole body if you can most people just cream face, arms and legs yeah, yeah. i want to cream the whole body to protect the whole body yeah. and then most people don't cream their feet most you, people, you do the feet too? Yes. I just do the surface. Most people don't even dry their feet with towels. You have to, and then put um, um, pomade Vaseline in between your that's toes. That's living. Oh, no, no, no. That's not bourgeois living. <laughs> that, that's, so, I do that. That's normal. Taking care of the feet. No, tell, tell me. You said what's the process again? You must, you you must, must warm you must, water or ordinary water. Okay, let's say we want to protect the skin from drying, okay? That's, right. that's number one. So you may want to put oil in your water for bath. And if you're not using a shower, you're in a bath. Okay. So you keep some oil in your skin. When you're done bathing, you don't dry your skin completely. Mm -hmm. So while there's still some water, you quickly put, apply pomade, okay, all over your skin. Some people use water-based um, um, lotions so because they have two oily skins. You, you want to use an oil-based one this time. If you use a water-based lotion, it gives you no protection. Okay. Because it dries off. But the oil, oil, layer on the skin prevents water from evaporating the oil okay. traps the water in, on your skin so that's the protective and you must put balm on the lips right especially men, men don't do that lips yeah. will crack okay yeah. Yeah. and then you want to cream your whole body and then take off the feet most people have cracked painful soles and that's really painful because it's getting dry you mm -hmm. have to put something there cocoa butter shea butter vaseline so cream the feet yeah, and then put and that's where my concern is the creaming of the feet. Okay, so I do it. I, I think, think, I think it's normal. Most people do it. Don't you do it? No, I never. Oh, really? I, I, you should do this summer time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that you can have crack soles. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that will be it. Uh, we've been speaking to Dr. Bright Reid, who is with Max International and also a general uh, medical practitioner, and has been helping us understand what we should do, especially as we inch closer to the Hamatan period and uh, when it gets dry take very good care of your skin and like you mentioned get oil-based 
<laughs> yes, and take some water as well. And then get oil-based body solutions. And then also take care of your scalp, your eye, your nostrils, and your ears. Men like myself who usually have dry lips, apply balm. You are safer that way. All right, so that will be it for the health club.